Hello YouTubers, I'm back. The first video has gotten a lot of response which I'm really pleased about. Um, hopefully it will encourage other people to do their own videos about creatures because there's nothing better than watching somebody else do all the hard work. Before starting on the next video where we'll hatch out our little Norn, um, I thought I'd show you the cobs that I've been using. These are what we call our mods. They can be a toy, a piece of food, or a complete and utter change to one of the rooms. When you first start up your world, this is what you'll start with. I'll just press play. I can move only a certain amount of area. Um, you'll be able to move more once you've got your creature. The more your creature explores, the more you can explore. And in order to get access to other things within the game, you have to collect, let me slide this over, this little spinning token. They're scattered about the world and they give different abilities. Most of them will un unlock um, the different applications that I showed you. Uh, you saw the science kit and the neurological kit. I don't like doing that and most people don't. It's a little boring and we just want to get to the good stuff. So we go to the injector kit. Oh, I'll best show you uh, the display. These are the different kits. You've got play, pause, help, all these different things. I'll show you the hatchery afterwards. What you want is the injector kit. This will bring up this window. Agents will show you what it is you can inject into your world. So the first one we want is Game Slate Controller. Inject. This puts it into your world and here it is. Click that green. I've now got that. Now got that, and that, and that, and that. Sorted. Now I can move about the world freely. I also have access to all of the kits. So let's get up the rest of this. Now the very first one that you will want to get is pick me up. You normally can't pick up creatures. Uh, the only way you're able to pick them up is if they fall into the water because you have to save them if they're drowning. And pick me up is very useful for moving norns from one area to another, saving them from doing stupid things, catching them if they're riding about in the elevator, which they do a lot if any of you ever played this game. So it's at the very top, which is where you want it. Whichever norm you're selected on, you've got pick me up on. You then click inject, and it will pick the norm up by your hand. You can then drop them back down. As you can see, there are a lot of different injectable items and other things. I'm just going to show you the main ones, the ones I think you'll really like. The volcano garden at the very bottom is wonderful. Now normally the volcano, if we head on over to there, the volcano is a very hostile place as you would imagine. It's got bubbling lava which the norns or the creatures cannot fall into it. It increases the temperature it's very very hot. There's also radiation here which can be very very damaging to your uh, creatures. If I have a look at this little etin pick up the science kit look at its physiology its physiology is absolutely fine but very soon it will start having problems with its um, with its bones basically the radiation will eat away at the bone marrow and um, he'll die very very quickly um, I mean this is a little etin He's only a baby. Uh, the game automatically hatches out one Etin and one Grendel, and whenever they die, 
and other ones replaced. Most people ignore them, but I quite like them. You can get an application which will mean you can breed and hatch female both Ettings and Grendels. And there are a lot of people that choose to stick to these little guys rather than the uh, the Norns. This uh, application, the Volcano Garden. Click it, inject. All of a sudden, that hostile garden, uh, that hostile area is now a beautiful garden. You'll see this is what I had in my other video. Radiation's gone. It's still nice and warm, um, but not overly so. And it's just a, a lot nicer place. Norns have, and other creatures, have an absolute love for elevators. They will ride up and down elevators for hours and hours and completely forget to do everything else, including eat and sleep. It's a little annoying, especially if you want to keep them in one area. So, the next application is the button disruptor. You get this little thing, place it over, and they no longer can press the button. You just move the elevator out of the way, and they can't get in it. It's wonderful. Like I said, I'll list where you can get all of these uh, applications in the links below. So, next one, the bilberry bush. There are a lot of different plants you can inject into your world. This one is great. Press inject and you get a little flower capsule. These can be eaten, they're tasty, but the main thing you want them for is the fact that they spread everywhere. And I mean everywhere. You can grow them in the desert, you can grow them on planks of wood. Um, they're absolutely brilliant for making sure that all of your norns have got access to food. Oh, that one didn't grow. Um, but yeah, they, they can grow pretty much everywhere. I think it's mainly in low nutrient environments. So where you find it difficult to grow anything else. Now this, this is a deaf cat mushroom. And they're awful things. Very, very toxic. And norns, although they generally learn not to eat them it only takes one or two bites and they start getting sick so the next application we're going to look at there are a few that gets rid of uh, different sort of items like that but you've got ones that you just inject which just completely wipe out all of the bad plants but I prefer the spade just because it's so simple there it is pick it up pop it down click it and it digs up whatever plant you want. Now, if you don't want to use the spade to get rid of your plants, GOG.com does include several cobs within their version of creatures, one of which is the plant killer. If we just inject it into our world, Now you can see you can change to whatever plant you want. There are four different versions, mainly ones that spread very, very quickly and are difficult to keep under control. So we'll take this one. These are cactuses. They're not very nice and they're not useful at all. Click the button and this pesticide gets sprayed around. Here you go. These are the seeds of the very spiky ones. You can pick them up while they're still in seed form. Just pop them in the water. There we go. As you can see, those ones have melted away. So we change to the spiky, and that will get rid of them. The next cob is the basket. Inject this. You can place this basket wherever you like, pop it down, and it's very useful for transferring things to, say, a group of norns that you've got separate. Quite often, norns will get thirsty in your world, and there are only a few places where they can get a drink. The hollow coconut solves that. If we inject it into the world, you can see it's exactly what it says in the tin. It's a hollow coconut. However, if we pick it up, take it over to water, and pop it back down, it's now a drink. My norns absolutely love hollow coconuts. They're forever carrying them around, slurping away. They last quite a while and it's just a really useful device to have in your game. 
This next little cob is very useful when you're breeding a lot of norns and you go over the population limit. Now when you go over the population limit, the incubator that hatches your eggs will close and you can't use it anymore. Neptune's womb, which was originally made in order for you to hatch aquatic norns in your world, so you were able to hatch them in water and they wouldn't suffocate on land, can solve that problem anyway. It can be placed on land without any problem, don't place it too high or your baby will hurt themselves when they fall out of it. Again, don't place them too low or they may get stuck in the ground. Um, so yeah, you pick up your egg, you pop it in and out pops a new Norn. It will never close and you can keep breeding more and more babies. Talking about uh, items falling down beneath the ground, this next uh, cob is the sweepers. But the underground sweepers, they're little worms that run around underneath the, the ground and they throw up anything that falls down through the world gaps back up onto land. Normally it's just plants and seeds that fall through, but occasionally it can be toys or even worse, your norns. But these little sweepers, they'll, uh, they'll throw them back up. So if we inject it in, and yep, there we go. They'll just stay there, crawling around and throwing anything up. The very last cob I'm going to show you in this video is going to be the inseminator. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Inject it into the world and you get your little, uh, little love icon. Click on one, click on the other, and you get an egg. Doesn't matter what age they are, what sex they are all oh, as you can see what breed they are so I'll be able to show you Neptune's womb pop the egg in yes you can crossbreed them but only either using the inseminator or the uh, splicing machine so here's our little baby and he looks all Grendel I think we'll have to save him and we can explore his genetic file later on. Now the last thing I'm going to show you in this video is how to import all these different cobs, how to get them from a little file that you download on the internet down into your game. So the first thing we'll need to do is come out of the game. If we head on over to the start menu, go to computer, then your local drive, your program files, you'll want to go to gog.com, Creature Albanian Years and Creatures 2. The file you're looking for is objects and this is where all of the cobs are kept. So you'll download your file, you'll get it probably in a zipped folder, unzip it and you'll get one of these and usually a WordPad file telling you who made it and any other extra information you need about the cob. So all you need to do is drag the cob file in here. You can drag the word file in here too if you want and it's all set. You'll see it in your game. If you want to add creatures to your world you can import them in by again downloading them and transferring them into another folder. I've put this here myself, Norns. Again, you'll get a little file, nice and easy, just drag and drop them in. In order to then bring that little creature into your game, we'll go back into our game. We go up to the top, File, Import Creature, you'll get this. Again, you can select wherever it is that you've saved your creatures. and there's our little Norn. To take her into a file form, say if you want to send her to someone else or if you want to copy the Norn's file so you've got uh, a spare copy in case something goes wrong, just go up to File and Export Creature. Save the name and there she is, she's gone. That's it for all these features. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed finding out about all the different cobs and I hope to show you a few more in the future. Next up, 
creature time.